The Andersons has a long history of working with our local, state, and national chapters of the FFA. And we are proud to continue that legacy by supporting the annual Ohio FFA Agri-Science Fair. We continue to be impressed with the caliber of projects presented by students from across Ohio. Your contribution to the ag industry through your research and ideas makes me excited for our future. Our industry needs innovative leaders like you, who are always looking for ways to improve how we grow, produce, distribute, and market the products that feed and fuel our world. I applaud you for being nimble and remaining dedicated to your projects during this unprecedented and challenging time. The skills you've developed this past year will serve you far into the future as you pursue your career, which we hope is in agriculture. Please enjoy the rest of the convention and connecting with others who share your interest in agriculture. I look forward to meeting some of you down the road as you consider employment opportunities in the industry and with the Andersons. Shout out to Olivia Cunningham from the Ashland FFA chapter. Thank you for inviting me for a day of workshops and conversations. I was so happy to see the thriving horticulture program at Ashland High School and see the amazing leadership you are providing for your FFA chapter and 4-H club. Shout out to the London FFA chapter. Thank you all for inviting me to hang out with you this past year. During both of my virtual chapter visits, you guys brought the excitement and energy to each of my workshops and always had me laughing at the end of the day. I had so much fun getting to know you all. Whether it was playing Pac-Man to see who could get the highest score or who could tell the best joke, my time with your chapter was unforgettable. See you all around. I'd like to shout out Austin Weekly from the Talamanda Butler Tech FFA chapter. He is truly what Ohio FFA is all about. Um, he's so selfless, such a great leader, and I think we could all learn a lesson or two from Austin. Um, I got to personally know him through my facilitation, and he was always one to volunteer, um, be an active listener, or help someone else out. So I just want to do a quick shout out um, to Austin for your, your future plans, your future in um, the ag industry, and we're all rooting for you. Shout out to the Lynchburg Clay FFA chapter. Thank you so much for inviting me to come speak at your banquet this spring. While I wasn't able to make it in person, I did enjoy recording a video and sending it your way. I also enjoyed seeing all the pictures of your members being recognized at your banquet afterwards. I can't wait to see what's in store for the future of your chapter. Shout out to Miss Abby Van Tyne from the Norway FFA chapter. Miss Van Tyne, it was a joy to watch you interact with your students throughout the entirety of the chapter visit. It is evident that you have a heart for education, and a passion to lead your students in the right direction. Thanks for all that you do. Each of these chapters have made long-term investments to ensure that Ohio FFA remains vibrant. The Chapter Trust Fund program offers an opportunity for each chapter to make a long-term investment to support FFA member awards, scholarships, and leadership activities for years to come. They are contributing to or have completed a chapter trust fund, which totals $1,000 through the Ohio FFA Foundation. They are responsible for creating agendas, recording meetings, and ensuring that the chapter although in the midst of a 365-day busy season, stays running and running effectively. Whether they are where corn is grown or where FFA members meet, these individuals have put in countless hours, late nights, and early mornings to get the job finished. The following members have excelled at their position, and their secretary's book is a pure reflection of the devotion of the best of the best across the Buckeye State. 
it is our pleasure to introduce to you our gold rated secretaries. Encouraging thrift among their members and striving to build up their financial standing through savings and investments is something these chapter treasurers know best. Countless hours and long days have gone into their chapter treasurer's book. These individuals have worked tirelessly reviewing their chapter's finances carefully and accurately. They have worked diligently putting together a treasurer's book for their chapter. Their dedication has set their chapters up for future financial success and earn them a gold-rated treasurer's award. These individuals capture their audience's attention as they display the hard work from their chapters with articles and photographs. They help create a strong rapport with their school and community to set their chapters up for greatness. These chapter reporters have put in the hours to create and display their chapters work in the form of a scrapbook and have received a gold rating for their efforts. These members have done an outstanding job of representing their FFA chapter and this organization as a whole. Congratulations to members who earned 2021 Gold Chapter Officer Books. The National FFA Organization annually recognizes members who rise to the top with the American Star Awards. These FFA members have gone above and beyond in their attitude, involvement, community service, and supervised agricultural experiences. Finalists for these awards have mastered skills in production, finance, management, and research. These students will represent the state of Ohio at the national level as candidates for the American Star Awards. Showtime! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1! come to order. We are now holding the first session of the 93rd Ohio FFA Convention. Madam Vice President, are all officers at their stations? I shall call the roll of officers, determine if they're at their stations, and report back to you, Madam President. The Sentinel, stationed by the door. Your duties there? Through this door, past many friends of the FFA. It is my duty to see the doors open to our friends at all times and that they are welcomed. I care for the meeting room and paraphernalia. I strive to keep the room comfortable and assist the president in maintaining order. The reporter. The reporter is stationed by the flag. Why by the flag? As the flag covers the United States of America, so I strive to inform the people in order that every man, woman, and child may know that the FFA is a national organization. 
that reaches from the state of Alaska to the Virgin Islands and from the state of Maine to Hawaii. The treasurer. Stationed by the emblem of Washington. Your duties there. I keep a record of receipts and disbursements just as Washington kept his farm accounts, carefully and accurately. I encourage thrift among the members and strive to build up our financial standings, their savings and investments. George Washington was better able to serve his country because he was financially independent. The secretary. Stationed by the ear of corn. Your duties there. I keep an accurate record of all meetings and correspond with other secretaries wherever corn is grown and FFA members meet. The advisor. Here by the owl. Why stationed by the owl? The owl is a time-honored emblem of knowledge and wisdom. Being older than the rest of you, I'm asked to advise you from time to time as the need arises. I hope my advice will always be based on true knowledge and ripen with wisdom. Madam Vice President, why do you keep a plow at your station? The plow is a symbol of labor and tillage of the soil. Without labor, neither knowledge nor wisdom can accomplish much. My duties require me to assist at all times in directing the work of our organization. I preside over meetings in the absence of our president, whose place is beneath the rising sun. Why is the president so stationed? The rising sun is a token of new air in agriculture. If we will follow the leadership of our president, we should be led out of the darkness of selfishness and into the glorious sunlight of brotherhood and cooperation. Madam President, all officers are at their stations. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The secretary will call the roll of members. Madam President, I'm pleased to announce that there are thousands of members and guests joining us for this, the first session of the 93rd Ohio FFA Convention. Thank you. FFA members, why are we here? To practice brotherhood, honor agricultural opportunities and responsibilities, and develop those qualities of leadership which an FFA member should possess. May we accomplish our purposes. I now declare this session of the 93rd Ohio FFA Convention duly open for the transaction of business or attention to any matters which may properly be presented. Wait, this isn't the Expo Center and State Fairgrounds, is it? I don't think so, but they told me to be here at 10 a.m. for the 93rd Ohio FFA State Convention. You know, that's interesting because they told me the exact same thing, but I don't see the same sea of blue jackets like everyone always talks about. So you're telling me I brought all my convention and essentials for nothing? This purse is filled with anything and everything you could possibly need. I have four different types of hairsprays, two combs. Victoria, wait. I sure hope I didn't go to Walmart and buy this air horn for nothing. I was so excited to hype up members being recognized across the stage. Well, why don't we have our own convention? Jake, come here. Let wait. me bump your hair. What are you two doing? Um, I'm giving Jake his certified convention bump since nobody's here yet. What do you mean? We are seconds away from kicking off the 93rd Ohio FFA convention. Here? Yes, here. But not just here. All over the state, actually. All it takes is a phone, laptop, or tablet, and boom, convention's there. So are y'all ready or what? Ready. Ready. Action! Hi, I'm Deborah Cornell, Chief Human Resources Officer at Bob Evans Farms. We're proud to sponsor this year's FFA convention and continue our long-standing support of Ohio FFA and its members. As a farmer, a neighbor, and a visionary, Bob Evans showed that Ohio soil was good for growing many things, including one remarkable legacy, a Southeastern Ohio native, husband to Jewel, and father of six, Bob Evans lived by the mantra, treat strangers like friends and friends like family. It served him and his business as well, along with the many lives he enriched. Always a farmer, Bob promoted more efficient techniques to better the environment. He also helped influence a new generation of farmers and agriculture leaders by actively supporting organizations like Ohio FFA. Bob's legacy is the heart of Bob Evans Farms. Our spirit of giving began with him. His generosity and passion for helping others set the foundation for the work we do today. Congratulations to today's award winners. Like Bob, your leadership, dedication, and passion for Ohio agriculture are truly an inspiration and will shape our future. Thank you. 
Hello and welcome to the 93rd Ohio FFA State Convention. Although convention may look and feel a bit different this year, that doesn't change the overall purpose. Over the next few days, we'll recognize the accomplishments our association has had over the past year. Watch as our award winners receive recognition for their successes and meet the next leaders of Ohio FFA. We've learned a lot over this past year. It's safe to say things don't always go as planned, but Ohio FFA has truly demonstrated what it means to lean into difficult times with a positive mindset. Instead of waiting for the world to change, Ohio FFA changed the world around them through their positivity. Chapters across the state supported their communities. Members listed each other up in unity, and our association continued to make a positive difference in the lives of students. By thinking outside the box, we provided new opportunities to members, all in the comfort of their own homes. Chapter presidents all across the state attended the first ever Chapter President Summit, and the energized Ohio FFA Conference was born. We truly put to life Teddy Roosevelt's quote, do what you can with what you have where you are. And there is no better representation of that than the 93rd Ohio FFA Convention. This convention is no longer a single location. It's where you are. It's in homes, classrooms, and even drive-in movie theaters all across the state. With convention being increasingly accessible, we have the opportunity to reach more students, parents, and supporters than ever before. This convention is truly a, a convention, convention for, for all. Agricultural classrooms and schools across the state have played a huge role in every FFA member's development. From the time we walked into our first agricultural education course, we didn't know the memories one classroom could hold. From early morning officer meetings to late night FFA meetings, we learned the timeless traditions that make our organization special. These next individuals welcomed us into that classroom, celebrated our every little accomplishment, and guided us along our FFA journey. Let's tune in as we recognize our agricultural educators and school administrators from all corners of the state. To my agricultural educators, Mr. Andrew DeLong and Mr. Jared Dickin, my high school principal, Mr. Rob Ramage, and my school superintendent, Mr. Monty Bainter. To my agricultural educators, Mr. Daniel Foster, Ms. Kelsey Dickey, and my high school principal, Mr. Stephen Hackett. To my high school agricultural education teachers, Mrs. Libby McNeil and Mr. Brian Cummings. To my high school principal, Mr. Joe Turner, and to my school superintendent, Mr. Tim Davis. To my agricultural educator, Mr. Don Hammersmith. To my high school principal, Mr. Rob Luderman, and high school board member, Mr. Dan Frederick. To our agricultural educators, Ms. Holly Jennings and Mr. Joe Broadwell. And to our school superintendent, Mr. Dave Gibson, our high school principal, Mr. Bob Walker, our student services coordinator, Mr. Brad Ellis, and our high school guidance counselor, Mrs. Kristen Baird. To my agricultural educator, Mr. Jordan Dews, my high school principal, Mr. Brad Menenhall, and my school superintendent, Mr. Jeff Snyder. To my agricultural educator, Mr. Brian Merce, my high school principal, Mr. John Harris, and my school superintendent, Mr. Mark Neal. To my agricultural educators, Mrs. Courtney Bachbrader and Mrs. Whitney Short. To my school superintendent, Dr. Jim Fritz. To my high school principal, Dr. Kevin Pfefferly. To Penta Career Center supervisor, Mr. David Stacklin. And my high school guidance counselor, Mrs. Karen Bixler. To my agricultural educators, Mr. Scott Sharp and Mr. Jeff Tilley. My superintendent, Mr. J.B. Dick, and my high school principal, Scott Hinton. To my ag teacher, Mrs. Donna Homan, my high school principal, Mr. Peter Cole, my school superintendent, Mr. Michael Wank, my high school guidance counselor, Mrs. Shannon Darby, and my English teacher and mentor, Mrs. Betsy Spear. These individuals have been with us in our brightest and darkest moments. They challenged us to be leaders within our chapters and advocates for our organization. We are truly grateful for the support of our advisors and school administration, and for all those across the state that contribute to the success of Ohio FFA. Our next guest is very familiar with the immense impact agricultural educators can have on our lives. When asked by her middle school agriculture teacher to try out a leadership development event, she found her passion for agricultural communications. Originally from the sunshine state of Florida, Arthur Jonasant attends Harvard College, where she studies government and global health policy. 
She plans on working to make our organization a place where all members feel welcome and celebrated. I'm delighted to introduce your 2020-2021 National Southern Region Vice President, Artha Jonasant. Hi, Ohio FFA. I'm Artha Jonasant, and I am serving as the Southern Region Vice President. I am thrilled that I can be joining you to celebrate all of the incredible accomplishments of your association in the past year. So let's take a trip to the spring of 2005. We are in the sweltering heat of the Florida sun, the smell of hot dogs and caramel corn fill the air. Far off in the distance, we see a tiny little Artha and I am putting on this pink helmet that I begged and begged my parents for over my braided pigtails. I drag a bat about the same size as my body to the batter's box, and I'm staring down the scariest thing that my five-year-old self could conjure up, the batting tee. So at this point in my t-ball season, my batting average is abysmal at best, but I knew that on that day, I was gonna change it for the better. So I put that bat over my shoulder. I give my shoulders a quick little shimmy. I say a quick prayer and I give the greatest swing all three foot, 10 inches of my body could do. And as I follow through that swing, I feel my stomach drop because I missed the ball on the tee again. No ball contact, no connection. How many of us are guilty of missing something right in front of our face? I do it all of the time. I mean, it'll be right there in front of our very eyes. We'll even have all of the tools necessary to find success, but for some reason, we miss the mark. I wish that I could say that I only swung and missed in T-ball, but I find myself doing that every day, especially when it comes to this idea of connection. Each day we spend so much time staring at TV screens and computer screens and cell phone screens. And if you're like me, you probably stare at the microwave screen a lot too. But how often do we use those means to cultivate true connection? Our world has never been so connected, but so many of us have never felt so alone. How unfortunate is it to have hundreds, maybe even thousands, followers and friends on social media, but no one to turn to in real life. But what if I said that we don't have to live this way? What if I said that we already have the very tools necessary to connect with each other at the palm of our very hands? So we're back on the t-ball field and my head is pointed downwards because a, that helmet was way too big for my body. And B, because I was feeling defeated. I missed the ball on the tee again. It was then that my coach, Coach Neil, the biggest, scariest six foot four inch man that I knew, walked up to me. He grabbed my big old head and said, Artha, all you gotta do is keep your eye on the prize and connect. All you gotta do is keep your eye on the prize and connect. Have we ever had a truth bomb dropped on us and we realize maybe it's many years later that they're talking about more than just a little bit of baseball? Coach Neil was not just teaching me how to connect my bat to the ball, but he was also teaching me how to connect with the people around me. We just got to keep our eye on the prize and connect. The prize in T-ball might have been a base hit, but the prize in life? Well, those are the genuine human connections we get to make when we are intentional about our interactions. So if you're like me and you find yourself longing for sound human connection and not just high engagement and analytics on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, I found that I can keep my eye on the prize and connect when I appreciate the beauty and the humanity of the people in my life. We begin to have our eye on the prize and connect when we stop viewing people as profiles and we strive to water those flowers that lie in our relationship garden. And we do this by entering other people's world more intimately and letting them 
into hours. So about this time last year, I did something that I never, ever, 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 ever thought I would do with my cell phone. See, under normal circumstances, I spend a lot of time on my phone. I read the news on my phone. I learn TikTok dances on my phone. I scroll mindlessly through Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest. I mean, my space would have been on my phone if it was still in style. So let's add this layer of a global pandemic in which the only means I have of communicating with my classmates scattered across the globe is through my cell phone. Well, y'all, my phone and I, we are tighter than braids these days. It seems like all I do is use my phone. And I don't know if you remember what life was like a year ago, but to be completely honest, it was quite the circus. It was about this time last year in which we realized that a two week quarantine and isolation period wasn't gonna drive away the novel coronavirus. It was this time last year that so many folks lost their job and found themselves in a constant state of uncertainty. And it was about this time last year that social and civil unrest was just as prevalent as the coronavirus itself. And because of all of this, social media in turn was the circus. And I found myself the leading act. Some folks would ask my opinion on subjects that I hadn't even formed one on yet, simply because I was one of their only black friends. Other folks assume my opinion on these really complex topics without ever consulting me first. I try to find the right words to say when in reality, the right words just never existed. All the while folks were harping on the flaws in my community, the flaws in this country, in this country the flaws in me as an individual. And everything that I saw, every tweet, every snorry story, every way too long for Facebook post that I came across just planted a seed of fury inside of me. So it was about this time last year when the world was on fire and I had so much on my plate that I found myself doing that one thing that many of us like to do when we just don't want to work. I was doom scrolling. Y'all, I had papers to write, finals to study for, Zoom calls to attend, laundry to fold. But all I had the courage to do was open up my phone and scroll. With the nation erupting from the killing of George Floyd and a contentious presidential and congressional election saturating the 24 hour news cycle, the fiery social media feeds mirrored the fiery streets of the cities in our great nation. And as I was doom scrolling, I came across a tweet that read, if you still have hope, you're not worthy of being around anymore. And that was it for me. The way that a single tweet could make me question all that I am, all that I believe, and if I were still worthy of occupying space on this earth, catapulted me to making one of the most rash decisions that I've made to date. I did the one thing no 20 year old girl wanted to do. I deleted all of my social media apps. If I could scroll, it was gone. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, all of it left my phone. Because that tweet helped me realize that I was using social media to have this fake sense of connection to the world. And once I impulsively deleted all of these apps, I took a second and I asked myself, Arthur, did you really just delete all of your social media off of your phone. The one thing that you had in this pandemic to keep you occupied, what are you gonna do now? <laughs> and I can't lie, the first few days, first few weeks of this social media cleanse, they weren't easy. I mean, I was so bored. I reorganized our kitchen pantry. I color coded my closet. I was about this close from just sitting in my backyard and counting blades of grass. I was just so, so unabused and I needed something to do with all of this newfound time. And eventually I did find something to do. Because I didn't have social media in, anymore, I had the opportunity to really open up the front doors of the lives of the people closest to me and enter in a more intimate way. 
I realized that those stories that I would just slide up on randomly and the pictures that I would like, they turned into intentional phone calls and text messages with the folks that I love the most. And on May 31st, my very best friend in the entire world, Marissa Joseph, she celebrated her 19th birthday. And instead of spending five minutes crafting the perfect Instagram story, I called my friend and we talked for hours. We laughed about the plans that we had for her birthday that were ruthlessly upended by the pandemic. We cried about the state of our country, but we also lifted each other up in the same breath to do something about all of those things that we didn't like. All because we had our eye on the prize and we connected with each other in those moments. The prize was never how many views I could get on that story. The prize was entering my friend's world on her big day. And I'm so glad that I got the chance to do that. And in my time away from social media, I didn't just enter the lives of the people that I love the most, but remarkably, they did the same for me. I'm a consistent tweeter and Instagrammer and Snapchatter and all the grammars we can think of. So when I fell off the face of the earth, the people who knew me well, mm -mm, they didn't just play a game of where's Artha. Instead, they opened up the front door to my life and they entered in a way that I never let them before. How many of us are guilty of just sharing the good with the world, just the pretty and just the good? I know that I plead guilty to being a perpetual perfectionist on social media. I never really gave the world permission to see me for who I am. And honestly, I still struggle with that some days. But in my time away from social media, I could no longer hide in that Facebook facade that I was living in. And in June, I got the opportunity to sit down with my mom and I got to tell her some of the things that I never thought I could share with anyone. I let my mom know that my anxiety, it made it really hard for me some days to do the things that I once enjoyed, like playing tennis and writing creatively. I let her know that I struggled a lot with imposter syndrome at my first two semesters at Harvard, and I really did feel like a stranger in this new community, in this new place that I was supposed to call home. And I never envisioned myself sharing those kinds of things about myself with other people, with people that I love. but because my mom is the most intentional lady that I know. She had her eye on the prize and she connected with me in those moments. And I'm so glad that we got to share that this summer. So folks, I get the appeal of wanting to appear perfect. There's something so frightening about sharing all of those things that we're not too proud of with other folks. If you're anything like me, you may ask questions like, will they still love me? Will they still like me? Will they still value me if they know about these imperfections? But here's the thing, folks. When we just share the good and we just share the great, we deprive ourselves of the love that other folks have to give to our broken hearts. And we can't let light in if we hide the cracks. We can't let light in if we hide the cracks. So because of my social media fast and my social media cleanse, I had the opportunity to appreciate the beauty of the humanity of the people in my life, of my tribe. And remarkably, they did the same for me. I asked about the things we wouldn't dare post and I shared the things that I wouldn't dare post. And as a result, I grew closer to my friends and family. I developed a better relationship with myself and I transitioned from viewing the world from a lens of unproductive rage to an aspirational lens. I aspired to have a better relation with, relationship with myself, with others, and the world that we all share. And it was then that I realized the problem, it wasn't my phone. It wasn't even social media, but it was the way that I used those things. The creators at Apple and Microsoft, Steve Jobs, they put the ball on the tee themselves. But my eyes weren't on the prize, so I missed. But when I changed the way that I used my phone and I changed the way that I used social media, when I changed the way that I navigated through those relationships, I got to enjoy that most beautiful prize of genuine human connection. And I don't get this right every day. 
I'm guilty of not taking the time to water the flowers that lie in my relationship garden and I get caught up, so consumed with the negativity in the world that I forget to walk in this world with the folks that I love to most and appreciate the positivity that encompasses our world too. But all it takes is a few moments to change that. All it takes is a few minutes each day to use our tools for good and to connect with the people around us. And if I've learned anything about the National FFA organization and its members, supporters, teachers, and stakeholders alike, it's that we're committed to making a positive difference in the lives of students. So I challenge each of you to use the tools at your disposal and to keep your eye on the prize and connect. Whether your tool is your cell phone or your oratorical skills or your fashion sense or your livestock grooming abilities or something else, use your tools to connect with the people around you. Whether that's at a CDE contest, at a livestock show, in the grocery store, and in math class or somewhere else, use your tools and connect. Use what you have to make people better. Use what you have to keep your eye on the prize and connect. So friends, let's grab those bats. Let's take a step into the batter's box. Let's put our bat over our shoulders and keep our eye on the prize and connect. Thank you so much, Ohio FFA. Artha, thank you so much for sharing such a valuable message with Ohio FFA. We are so thankful to have leaders like you in our organization who lead and serve with their whole heart and create an inclusive and welcoming space for all. Now let's welcome a very special guest to our screen, our Ohio FFA talent, Carson Klaus from the John Glenn FFA chapter. A farmer and a teacher, a hooker and a preacher, Riding on a midnight bus bound for Mexico One was headed for vacation One for higher education And two of them were searching for lost souls That driver never ever saw the stop sign Eighteen wheelers can't stop on a dime there are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway Why there's not four of them, heaven only knows It's not what you take when you leave this world behind you It's what you leave behind you when you go well, That farmer left a harvest a home in 80 acres The faith and love for growing things In his young son's heart And that teacher left her wisdom In the minds of lots of children And did her best to give them all a better start And that preacher whispered Can't you see the promised land? As he laid his blood-stained Bible in that hooker's hand There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway Why there's not four of them, heaven only knows I guess it's, it's not what you take when you leave this world behind you It's what you leave behind you when you go the story that our preacher told last Sunday As he held that blood-stained Bible up For all of us to see He said, bless the farmer And the teacher And the preacher Who gave this Bible to my mama Who read it to me There are 
three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway why there's not four of them now i guess we know it's not what you take when you leave this world behind you it's what you leave behind you when you go there are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. Thank you, Carson, for that amazing performance. When problems arise, these students are the first to develop a solution, identify a hypothesis, and get to work executing an experiment. From the field to the laboratory, the agri-science fair seeks to cultivate curiosity from those who pursue it. Students use agriculture's newest technologies and emerging techniques to draw conclusions, prepare a report, and present their findings on collected data. These students know the importance of their research on local agriculturalists and consumers. Carl Sagan once said, somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. The finalists we are about to recognize are Ohio scientific leaders, shedding light on complex issues and developing solutions that will advance agricultural systems. The AgriScience Fair is brought to you by the Andersons.
congratulations to all of our Agri Science Fair winners for all of your accomplishments. The final seconds of the Michigan-Ohio State game, the championship drive at the county fair, and the ascent to the top of a roller coaster. All moments in which we find ourselves at the edge of our seats. Right now, there are nearly 40 FFA members and their families who, too, find themselves in the same waiting position. In March, these individuals embarked on a journey of self-discovery filled with many late nights and early mornings in hopes of finding themselves a place on the 2021-2022 Ohio FFA State Officer Team. For nearly two months, they have waited patiently on the edge of their seat, so without further ado, it's time to meet those who will write the next chapter of their story as an Ohio FFA State Officer. I'd like to thank Fine Swine LLC for sponsoring the announcement of our officer candidates. Those slated for a position on the 2021-2022 Ohio FFA State Officer Team are... The candidates for State Sentinel are... Jerry Dunn, Preble Shawnee, and Faith Galovich, Union Local. For State Secretary R, Laura Webker, Versailles. Aubrey Schwartz, Miami Trace, Great Oaks. The candidates for State Vice President are Morgan Anderson, Amanda Clear Creek, Cassandra Mavis, Fairview. State President are Jacob Zakowski, Anthony Wayne Pinta, and Bailey Lowe, Felicity Franklin. <laughs> Congratulations to all of our candidates, and I wish you all. Best of luck. At this time, I'll welcome back to the stage Ohio FFA State Sentinel Victoria Snyder and Ohio FFA State Vice President at Large Jacob Zakowski to close out this session. Throughout this session, we recognized agricultural educators and school administrators who thought outside the box to provide opportunities for our members. And we heard the inspiring words of the National FFA Southern Region Vice President Arthur Jonasat recognized Agri Science Fair winners and met the next group of individuals that will lead Ohio FFA. Although this first session is quickly drawing to a close, there is still so much more to see over these next few days. Be sure to check out Ohio FFA's social media channels and tune in to the next general session at 1 p.m. We'll see you there. Mr. Secretary, do you have a record of any further business which should now be transacted? I have none, Madam President. Does any member know of any new or unfinished business which should properly come before this session? We are about to adjourn this session of the 93rd Ohio FFA Convention. As we mingle with others, let us be diligent in labor, just in our dealings, courteous to everyone, and above all, 
honest, and fair in the game of life. Fellow FFA members and guests, join me in a salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I now declare this session adjourned. <laughs>